The president, the charged person today in the hearing, you are allowed to be seated if requested. So I would like you to have to have your expression. I would like to sit to sit. Before the pronouncement of the decision today, the pre-trial chamber would like to inform that this is a summary of the decision. The full decision will be published on the court's website subsequently. Also, the pre-trial chamber would like to inform the public that this decision will be published on the websites. Then the, that decision is the full version. And the summary and the full decision are identical. Then uh, as for the decision of Yang Sari, we have decided on the basis of written submissions. And we will also publish the decision of Yang Sari this evening. I would like to pronounce the decision of Kiel Sampan appeal against the order on translation rights and obligations of the parties. This is a summary decision. In its decision, the pre-trial chamber makes reference to the documents filed in this appeal and the hearing held on 4 December 2008. Two, admissibility of the appeal. On 19th June 2008, the co-investigating judges issued their translation order which was notified to the parties on 23 June 2008. The co-lawyers for the charged person filed a notice of appeal in accordance with Internal Rule 75 on the 30th of June 2008. The appeal brief was filed on the 22nd of July 2008 and therefore in time. A. Submissions of the parties. The co-lawyers for the charged person request that the pre-trial chamber 
One, set aside the co-investigating judge's decision denying the request for translation of the case file. Two, note the violations of the charged person's rights as a result of the absence of translation. And three, immediately and unconditionally release the charged person. They do so on the grounds that the co-investigating judge's decision lacks a legal basis and that the charged person's rights have been violated to such an extent that it is no longer possible to uphold his right to a fair trial. Three, the co-lawyers more particularly argue that the translation order violates the charged person's right to legal assistance to participate in the proceedings to equality of arms to have adequate time and facilities to prepare a defense and to be tried within a reasonable time. They emphasize that the translation order violates the charged person's right to effective legal assistance by not providing for the translation of the entire case file into a language that the charged person's international co-lawyer understands. Four, in their appeal brief, the co-lawyers for the charged person state that the present appeal is submitted pursuant to Internal Rule 74.3b. Five, the co-prosecutors submit that the charged person's appeal is inadmissible since, open quotes, Rule 74.3, exhaustively enumerates the types of orders against which a charged person may appeal to the pre-trial chamber. This rule does not envisage an appeal against an order denying requests for translation of documents into the language of the charged person or his counsel. End of quote. The co-prosecutors argue that although the issue of translation falls within the decision-making powers of the co-investigating judges, the decisions of the co-investigating judges on this issue are not appealable. They add that translation is a matter of judicial administration and is beyond the scope of Internal Rule 74.3. B. Jurisdiction of the Pre-Trial Chamber. 6. The Pre-Trial Chamber notes Rule 73 and Rule 74 of the Internal Rules. 7. As the appeal is based on Internal Rule 74.3b, the pre-trial chamber 
shall determine whether it is lodged against an order of the co-investigating judges, open quotes, refusing a request for investigative action allowed under these internal rules, end quote. Requests for investigative action by a charged person. Eight, internal rule 5510 provides charged persons the right to request investigative actions, open quote, at any time during an investigation, the co-prosecutors, a charged person, or a civil party may request the co-investigating judges to make such orders or undertake such investigative action as they consider necessary for the conduct of the investigation. If the co-investigating judges do not agree with the request, they shall issue a rejection order as soon as possible and, in any event, before the end of the judicial investigation. The order, which shall set out the reasons for the rejection, shall be notified to the parties and shall be subject to appeal. 9. Internal Rule 58.6 further provides, open quote, at any time during an investigation, the charged person may request the co-investigating judges to interview him or her, question witnesses, go to a site, order expertise, or collect other evidence on his or her behalf. The request shall be made in writing with a statement of factual reasons for the request. If the co-investigating judges do not grant the request, they shall issue a rejection order as soon as possible and in any event before the end of the investigation. The rejection order shall state the factual reasons for rejection. The charged person shall immediately be notified of the rejection order. The charged person may appeal the rejection order to the pretrial chamber. End of quote. 10. The internal rules do not explicitly define the expression investigative action. However, its meaning can be inferred when reading together different provisions of the internal rules. 11. In this respect, Internal Rule 55.5 provides, open quote, in the conduct of judicial investigations, the co-investigating judges may take any investigative action conducive to ascertaining the truth. In all cases, they shall conduct their investigation impartially whether the evidence is inculpatory or exculpatory. Twelve. The pre-trial chamber considers that the process of ascertaining the truth necessarily involves the collection of information. In civil law systems, this is indeed described 
as being the purpose of a judicial investigation. In the French system, investigative actions are described as being acts by which an investigating judge searches for evidence. The pre-trial chamber notes that the Cambodian system on which the internal rules are based is rather similar to the French system. 13. The pre-trial chamber observes that internal rule 58.6 which specifically enumerates requests that can be made by a charged person to the co-investigating judges refers only to actions that aim at gathering evidence. Fourteen, another indication that investigative actions are aimed to collect information can be found in Internal Rule 62, which deals with the possibility for the co-investigating judges to delegate their power to undertake investigative actions to ECCC -C -C investigators or the judicial police. 15. On the basis of these considerations, the pre-trial chamber finds that requests for investigative actions should be interpreted as being requests for action to be performed by the co-investigating judges or open delegation by the ECCC investigators or the judicial police with the purpose of collecting information conducive to ascertaining the truth. Order on translation rights and obligations of the parties. 16. The translation order determines the rights and obligations of the parties in relation to translation. In this respect, the co-investigating judges mentioned, open quotes, considering the lack of a statutory provision on the extent of translation obligations and rights, considering that the content of such obligations and rights gives rise to an important question of general interest, so the co-investigating judges have decided to address this memorandum to all parties, end of quote. 17. The translation order does not constitute an action that aims at collecting information. Furthermore, it is noted that the co-investigating judges were not requested to undertake any action themselves, which is a characteristic of an investigative action as mentioned above. 18. The pre-trial chamber finds that the appeal is not lodged against an order refusing a request for investigative action. It does not fall within the ambit of appealable matters set out in Internal Rule 74.3b. 19. 
The pre-trial chamber further notes that there is no other specific provision in the internal rules allowing the charged person to appeal the translation order before the pre-trial chamber. <coughs> 20. The internal rules provide for a number of orders that can be appealed to the pre-trial chamber by charged persons. The list is exhaustive and the pre-trial chamber has jurisdiction to decide only on appeals against the mentioned orders and decisions. Other orders of the co-investigating judges are subject to control through the annulment procedure which ensures that a charged person may request that a proceeding affected by procedural defect which infringes his or her rights be annulled. The pre-trial chamber observes that this procedure is different from the appeal procedure and therefore requires different actions from the co-lawyers to lead the issue before the pre-trial chamber. The right to a fair trial. 21. The pre-trial chamber notes that the co-lawyers allege that the translation order impairs the charged person's right to a fair trial as explained in paragraph 14 above. Twenty-two, the pre-trial chamber will examine whether internal rule 21 requires that it adopts a broader interpretation of the charged person's right to appeal in order to ensure that proceedings during the investigation are fair and adversarial and that a balance is preserved between the rights of the parties. 23. The translation order provides that the charged person is entitled to receive translation into French of the following documents. Any indictment of the co-investigating judges, the elements of proof on which any such indictment would rely, the introductory submission and any final submissions by the co-prosecutors, the footnotes and indexes of factual elements on which those submissions rely, concretely D3 and D3 forward slash Roman 1 to 4. All judicial decisions and orders and all filings by the parties before the ECCC as provided by Article 7.1 of the Practice Direction on Filing Documents Before the ECCC. 24. Pursuant to the translation order, these documents shall also be transmitted in Khmer, the charged person's mother tongue. 25. The co-investigating judges specify that this order 
is designed to determine the rights and obligations of the parties during their investigation and that, open quotes, it is for the trial chamber once seized of the case file to manage the translation requirements of any trial as the interests of the proper administration of justice and of the right to a fair trial dictate. End of quote. Twenty-six. The pre-trial chamber observes that the charged person has, pursuant to Internal Rule 21-1-D, the right to be informed of the charges brought against him. However, neither the ECCC law nor the internal rules provide the charged persons an explicit right to receive all documents contained in their case file into their own language or that of their lawyer or lawyers. The fact that a language is one of the three official languages of the court does not amount in itself to a right for the charged person to have all documents contained in his case file translated into this language. 27. Consistent with the reasoning in the translation order, jurisprudence of international tribunals has repeatedly held that a defendant's right to translation of documents into a language he or she understands does not extend to all documents in his or her case file, even in the case where a defendant is self-represented. A request for translation of the entire case file into the language of the defendant's lawyer has also been denied. More particularly, the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia ICTY and the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, ICTR, have denied requests for translation of all documents on the basis that, open quote, translation in advance of each and every document into the language of the accused beyond what is required by the statutes and rules may seriously jeopardize the accused's right to an expeditious trial because of the very substantial time and resources required for translation of all documents. End of quote. The International Criminal Court, ICC, has held that the fairness principle does, open quote, not grant the defendant the right to have all procedural documents and all evidentiary materials disclosed by the prosecution translated, end of quote. 28. The pre-trial chamber notes that the right for the co-lawyers to have access to the case file during the investigation does not mean that all the material collected should automatically be translated into their language. 
29. The pre-trial chamber finds, however, that depending on the specific circumstances of a case, translation of documents might be necessary to ensure that a charged person is able to exercise his or her rights during the investigation. By deciding that, open quotes, the key requirement is to allow a charged person to have knowledge of the case against him and to defend himself, notably by being able to put before the court his version of the events, end of quote, the co-investigating judges have set out a standard that shall ensure that the charged person is able to exercise his rights during the investigation and thus ensure the fairness of the proceedings at this stage. 30. The charged person is represented by both an international and a national lawyer as it is his right pursuant to Internal Rule 22. The co-prosecutors have submitted and it was not contested by the co-lawyers that the defense team of the charged person also comprises a legal consultant who is proficient in French and English and a Cambodian jurist who is proficient in Khmer, French and English. 31. In, ad in addition to his legal team, the charged person has been allowed free of charge and full time the assistance of a translator between two official working languages to be specified by the defense team to ensure that the charged persons and the defense teams can have certain documents translated as required to assess the team's translation requirements for transmission to CMS or court management section and to assist the team's collaboration with CMS. In this respect, it is noted that international jurisprudence has recognized that providing a defendant with an interpreter is an adequate substitute for provision of the translation of certain documents. 32. The charged person is also allowed to identify specific documents and request their translation. 33. The pre-trial chamber notes that the ICTY and ICTR have found that exculpatory material shall be made available to the defendant in a language he or she understands in order for the defendant to be able to prepare his or her defense. The pre-trial chamber considers that the defense team is in a position to properly identify the material that could be exculpatory and then request translation of these specific documents which it is allowed to do by the trial by the translation order 34 the pre-trial chamber finds that the charged person's rights 
safeguarded in Internal Rule 21 are not violated. The translation order is in accordance with international standards in respect of translation rights. The provision of a translator for a multilingual team of lawyers ensures that all necessary linguistic requirements are properly met for this stage of the proceedings before the ECCC. The pre-trial the pre chamber therefore finds that Internal Rule 21 does not force it to interpret the internal rules in such a way that the appeal against the translation order should be dis declared admissible. Therefore, the pre-trial chamber hereby decides unanimously that the appeal is inadmissible Phnom Penh, 20 February 2009. Security, please return the charged person to the detention facility. This hearing is adjourned.